I think we have we've always had a special relationship with France. From the first time we played here, we really genuinely fell in love with the people. Lock me up in the maze. The meaning of the word, it really has multiple meanings. One of them being something is coming, like, but, but it's usually ominous. It's like uh, something is looming um, and it's heavy on your shoulders, but it doesn't necessarily have to be bad. It just means something is, is incoming. So it could be good, uh, but you mostly perceive it to be bad. And then there also is the, the double meaning of it being a loom, like uh, making a tapestry. So it just served the record because the record is very much, you know, the, the, the cover art is the sunset and it, it might be a sunset, it might be a sunrise. Mm -hmm. It could be de depending on how you want to see it. And what's to come, what's, is it ending? You know, uh, the birth, the death, and uh, the album kind of explores those, those principles. I've always only just written uh, without thinking about other people's perceptions. For better or for worse, I think I always am just writing from a personal place because uh, I've done it since I was very young and I just always do the same. Uh, and then the album comes out and, pe and then people interpret it and think of it as uh, however they may see it. Uh, but I never think of it really as being vulnerable as much anymore as much as because I just don't let myself think about that. Lock me up in the Matt and Robin do a really good job of pinning us down. They're really good at just being quiet and letting us just wander. And then we always kind of come back yeah. to a, a centered place with them because I think their energy is so calm and consistent and reserved. And I can be very eccentric and all over the place. And so they do a good job of not riding my wave. And I think Wayne also is good at that. And I think that all equals out to to help the dragons be a little more grounded because it can just be absolute chaos very, very easily if i was left to my own devices i think it would just be absolute chaos probably <laughs> and not a good not a good way not like great it'd be great it would be chaos yeah <laughs> and there's definitely moments of more guitar driven stuff like take me to the beach i feel like there's quite a bit of guitar on that kid has quite a big guitar i uh, there's moments where it's like, oh, that's a guitar. The thing that excites me about working with Matt, Man, Robin is that they kind of hate, and I, I kind of hate too, just like very generic sounding anything. If anything just sounds like what it is, mm -hmm. it just is very boring to them. So if I just give them a guitar part, a lot of times it's like, well, this isn't good enough. They come from a more like pop world. And so like, I, I feel like I, it kind of challenges me to make up guitar parts that don't sound like guitar. And I think you'd probably be surprised. If you were to go through all the tracks, a lot of the things you think are synths are actually guitars that I kind of spruced up and made sound like synths, which is fun for me because mm. that's exciting. I kind of also get bored with just, you know, guitar sounding just the way a guitar sounds like nine times out of ten. I like to experiment. Alternative music is, is probably what I consume the most of. Um, but yeah, and I love I love gorillas. Uh, and certainly uh, it's ruminating in my mind <clears throat> all the time. It's like all, all music is. Uh, we didn't, you know, we weren't playing that song and thinking, well, let's try to have a drum track that sounds gorillas-esque. But, but I, I certainly could hear it and be like, oh yeah, I'm sure that there was some some sort of something flying around in my head. Alternative music, I think, I, you know, I consume so much music. And, I, you know, I grew up in the eight day and age of Napster and LimeWire and Kazaa and, and Spotify Now and all, you know. I didn't grow up buying albums, you know. I didn't listen to, like, I wasn't like, I'm a rock guy and I buy rock music and I listen to guitars. Yeah. Like, I, I would listen to songs that have guitar and I listen to songs that have synth and listen to songs that were hip-hop and you know I so I draw so much inspiration from 
so many different places. But um, but yeah, Kid Kid is a very fun one on the record, and maybe the most tempo uh, of all the songs on the record. One of the first things that Rick Rubin said when we worked with him was he was it was exciting for him because of that. He's where he was like he said, you know, I've worked with so many bands where you kind of are you you kind of have to do this. Your fans expect you to sound like this, and if you don't, they're going to be really mad. Whereas with Dragons, we really can get away with a lot because our fans have always expected to be un done. It could be anything. It could be pop. It could be rock. It could be EDM. It could be hip hop infused. It could, you know, so our, because of that, we're in a, we feel very lucky to have fans who are along for the ride. And, and there's going to be songs that aren't for them and songs that are, we don't expect everyone to, to like all the songs. And, uh, um, just like, I don't expect myself to listen to everything and like it. Yeah. So some things are for some people and others are not. Nice to meet you. I think we have we've always had a special relationship with France. From the first time we played here, we really genuinely fell in love with the people. I think and I think that the people felt that. So it's it's been a, a long relationship of a decade now. Um uh, and we just have a a deep love for the, the culture and the people and They've always been so welcoming to us, and we've played a lot. Some of our most special shows have been here in France. But when we started playing, it was 100 people, mm -hmm. you know, in, in France. And and uh, I remember we also played the Bataclan a week before the attacks. I think it's possible. I, I think a band is hard if you have four or three people that want to be lead singers. <laughs> And I've never had any desire to do that. So I, I think a band can work as long as it's understood. I think in a lot of ways, yes, it's absolutely democratic. You know, we vote on everything and whether we play a show or, you know, what songs make an album and stuff. But I think it's also important to have a creative leader too. I think that's also a good way to make a band last. And Dan has always been that for us. And it's really worked out well. Yes, because, uh, you know, it, I think everyone knows what their role is. Everyone knows what they bring to the table. and. It's worked for us. I would say Wayne is kind of underplaying his role because he has, he certainly has been, uh, everything is always, I'm always creating with an eye to Wayne like this. So even if I'm, do, I'm trying to be a creative leader, I'm also feeling, we know each other so well and I he, feel his energy and I know when something feels right, if it feels right to me, but it's not feeling right to him and it doesn't feel right to me. And so there's a lot of unsaid things that are happening and we've created together now for so many years. Everybody kind of has a role and it's and it plays a, an important role. Uh, and Ben's not here with us right now because his, uh, he just had a child, so he's home being dad. And Ben Ben's role has always been to come in and add the bass. And he's very happy with that and that's his job and he does a fantastic job at it. So. Yeah, I agree with Wayne that if it was three people trying to, three cooks in the kitchen or she, three chefs, that would be a pro. I don't want to be in a band like that, <laughs> you know. And there, are, I think there are bands like that, but they usually break up. Yeah.